This conference will now be recorded. Well, there we are. It's nine o'clock and call the meeting to order. So I need the confirmation of the agenda. I'd like to move. So moved. Don. Alan DeBreen seconded. Uh, thank you. Here's all the board confirmed the agenda is presented. Declaration of kind of interest. If you have any, you can declare it at any given time. I need a move and a second for the adoption of the minutes. Alan will move it. Moved. And I'll second it, John. Thank you. Any discussion? Comments? Hearing none, that is passed. Business arising. I know business arising. We'll move on to uh, the detachment commander's report. I need a move and a second for that. I move. Alan DeBrino, move it. Okay. Who's that? Who's the second? John. Yep. Deborah, the uh, method by which the other detachment commanders read through this uh, report was to hit some of the highlights on the report. This report this time around is quite extensive, so uh, we'll leave it up to you to decide how to do it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I just wanted, by way of an explanation, um, there is more information included in this uh, report. Um, Quite frankly, I didn't really like the reports we were putting forward in the past. Um, they are just a bunch of numbers, and I think it really capture all the great work our officers are doing um, for the community. And I wanted to highlight that. Now, this is a work in progress, and I'm not quite pleased with the formatting of this one, but we'll, we'll be cleaning that up and making it more reader friendly in the future. I'm working with one of our admin clerks and getting her some training. And um, what I'd like to do is include some information I think that I would want to know if I was on a police services board. Um, some history calls for service and some graphs to show you sort of the trends um, at a glance um, so that uh, you're all better informed uh, with what's going on in the policing world. Um, it, of course, we'll also include completed hours because that's important to everyone. Um, but I just thought um, there were certain areas that we weren't really reporting on that I thought that you would want to know. If that is not the case, please feel free to let me know. But um, that's sort of the reasoning behind it. Um, so just to get to the report now, we're going to be including more on training. I noticed in the last few reports, training is ongoing, and that is true. Uh, but since uh, this last couple of weeks, we've had a couple of new recruits that weren't formally trained on radar enforcement. And so they've since received that training and now we'll be able to do uh, radar enforcement uh, out there and in different areas. Um, so that's uh, sort of the things that we'll be including in, in our training. Um, sorry, the, the sort of also the background in sort of including all of this information. It's not just specific to Southgate, although there will be specifics to Southgate. But as we move forward for the Comprehensive uh, Police Services Act, I thought it important because crime doesn't know any boundaries. And I thought that Southgate might be interested in what's going on in the next community. Um, it's also a bit of a comparison. Up till now, we will not be able to report on every township within Grey Bruce, uh, because there has to be a sharing a, um, agreement between all the townships in order to release that information. But if I can say in um, you know, Grey Bruce County, we had X number of calls for service in the last two months, um, and so many of them were in Southgate, it gives you some perspective on, on that. Um, so I thought that that would be interesting to know for you. Deborah, can um, I just interrupt quickly? Sure. Uh, we have another. We have another caller on the line. Is that you, Dale?
Dale, is that you? Okay, it must not be Dale. I just want to make sure it wasn't our last member, so it must just be a member of the public. So go ahead, Deborah. Thank you. No worries. Um, so, like I was saying, that with the new Comprehensive Police Services Act, there will be less police services boards. We're not sure quite what that'll look like yet because the way it's worded is uh, for OPP detachments, there'll be one or more boards. Um, that could depend on the size of the catchment area of that detachment, or it could mean if we have First Nation, which we do in our area, that they might have a separate police service board. But um, the reports will be sort of swaying towards an overall um, um, idea of what's going on in the county as far as policing goes. Um, so media, media relations report. So um, Rick Sadler is our media officer. He also is our Crime Stoppers coordinator. So when he receives Crime Stoppers tips, he'll uh, send them out to the appropriate, either the shift sergeant or crime or a street crime unit. Um, for follow-up and then they report back and of course everything's anonymous. Um, so just to highlight a couple of the, um, the media releases, I don't know if you had the opportunity to see any of the footage for the ice rescue that went up um, that, uh, that happened where we had the uh, helicopter, um, the Coast Guard was involved, um, our emergency services and uh, did that ice rescue, but the footage is uh, quite spectacular, actually. Um, a lot of snowmobile patrols. So we're finding that because the snowmobile patrols up in the north end of uh, the province are closed, a lot of people are coming to this area, a lot of people from out of town and um, some from red zone areas, which isn't ideal, but because it's recreation, it is allowed. Um, and he does do a lot of uh, reporting live from the scene. Um, it's a little bit more interesting and dynamic when you have that. So he, he does do quite a bit of that. And of course, the social media posts. Um, the community service report. So last police service board meeting, I do recall that there was a citizen that wrote in to the board um, wanting to highlight that he thought that um, some traffic enforcement was needed in the Dundalk area. And so um, I took that complaint and created what's called a focus patrol. And I don't know if you're familiar with that, but um, basically it, uh, we usually start with analytics to see, you know, if we have a speed spy up or um, a, a speed display sign. And if we have the analytics, so that's great, we start with that, we narrow it down and we create a, an occurrence where each shift is, it's mandatory and, and it's a requirement that they um, spend some time in that focus patrol and then they report back. So that's what we did for the Dundalk area. So we spent a total of 40 hours in Dundalk doing uh, traffic enforcement. Uh, seven provincial offense notices were issued for Highway Traffic Act violations, and one was for an Insurance Act violation, and there was 13 verbal warnings, um, and that was all for speed. One of the other areas I wanted to report on to our boards is um, our auxiliary unit. That hadn't been included in the past, and I think it's really important that we have several people that volunteer their time and go through extensive training and uh, assist our officers out there and they do a lot of community service work. Um, so just in this particular uh, report, it has um, the uh, Staff Sergeant Thomas Buckley is our auxiliary um, leader. And we have two constables that are liaisons to the auxiliary unit. And um, that's Sean Herlihy and Kevin Jansen. And um, so the unit activities now due to COVID over the 2020, um, our auxiliary unit was suspended um, um, during the, the peak times and uh, reinstated and then suspended again when we went through the second wave. Uh, but some of the things that they do, they'll assist with um, snowmobile patrols. So if we have one officer that's trained up and we have an auxiliary that's trained up that can go with them, we get more people out there uh, because usually they have to go out in twos. Um, they attend uh, defensive tactic training and firearms training. 
they don't carry a firearm, but they are expected to use it if the officer goes down and uh, they're um, expected to uh, assist with that. Um, we have uh, currently two people, uh, two applicants that are uh, in the pool for uh, Gray Bruce and they go through psychological testing. So we have to wait till all that testing and background check is done before they can uh, uh, come on board as members. Uh, they have monthly meetings here and um, it's just started up again in the auxiliary unit uh, after the second wave and now we're that we're in the green zone here. Uh, so we currently have uh, 17 member positions in our auxiliary unit and uh, so we have uh, 10 right now with two applicants and uh, they expect them to be successful in their uh, process and then we'll be running some uh, advertisements for more members after that. Uh, one of the things they do look after for us is the speed spy. And um, so right during the winter time, the speed spy is not that effective because it drains the battery really quickly. So the speed spy is something that they, you know, if we received a complaint on a particular uh, stretch of uh, roadway, we would have them take the speed spy, set it up, leave it up for approximately a week, then they would take it down and then they download all the data. And that gives us a, a really clear picture of um, if there is an issue or not. Sometimes it's people's perception that there's an issue and this, the, the data doesn't support that, but most often the data does support and then, then we can uh, create a focus patrol and, and look after that area. And so below that is just their allotted hours and where they spent their time. Um, let's see. Um, the next is our community street crime unit. So this is a unit that your um, basic costs for per household pays for. It is a proactive unit. Um, they're not the unit that takes their their key responsibility is street level drugs and property crime. They go hand in hand with each other. There really isn't a market for used TVs, but there is in trading for drugs or, um, so they really do go hand in hand. Um, you know, your break and enters that you were talking about, often they're linked to uh, the drug subculture. So our community street crime unit, that's their, that's their uh, mandate is, is low level, uh, basic uh, uh, property crime and drug crime. If uh, they do, and this sometimes happens where they run into, you know, a, um, a more complex, larger scale case from the street level, that gets referred to our uh, um, crime unit to uh, follow up on. But this is just uh, an overview of some of the things that they do. Again, this is not specific to Southgate, but it is overall um, our detachment area. Because like I said, the crime doesn't really know any borders and I think it's important to have an overall picture of, uh, of what's going on. And they've done some, they really do some fantastic work. Um, they execute a lot of warrants. Um, they uh, get a lot of drugs off the street and they certainly um, keep track of any, um, you know, bad batches of, of uh, of uh, fentanyl, for instance, um, and uh, make sure that, uh, first of all, our, our officers are notified because it could be that they come across that sort of thing when they're searching somebody or searching a car uh, for their officer safety, but also uh, for the community as well. Um, the next is our major crime unit, and that's uh, run by Detective Sergeant Byron Swass. Um, very busy over the last couple of years. We've had the Meaford, hom Meaford homicide. Um, we've had the homicide on Saugeen. We had a drive-by shooting in Oliphant. And um, all these things have to be, um, uh, these cases run by uh, the, the crime unit. And uh, they've been uh, extremely busy, but also while all those things are going on, of course, the calls for service keep coming in. Um, so this is just a highlight of uh, some of the areas in which they have been working on the last couple of months. Um, every sudden death uh, that we have in the area must be a crime notification. 
uh, sexual assaults have to be managed by the crime unit. Um, uh, child pornography investigations, again, by the crime unit, criminal harassment. Um, and then the continuous follow-up and uh, court preparation, of course, for these cases when they go to court. Um, the hours below, that's uh, something that we've reported on in the past in the um, our ride hours, uh, foot patrol hours, arrests, uh, COVID-19 uh, related occurrences, and uh, our calls for service overall. And beyond that is your, um, you're quite familiar with, I'm sure, is your uh, billing summary report. And uh, that would be uh, my submission in the detachment commander's report. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to try and answer them for you. Well, there's one thing I'd like to get information on, if I may. Operational, animal stray and animal other. Do you think you could get it more specific? Is it a stray dog, a stray cat, cattle beast loose in the road? What what page is that on, sir? Uh, Fifteen. Or important. Yeah, I'd have to go into the actual occurrence to find out what type of animal it is. Uh, generally speaking, like we go to calls that are, you know, a horse is loose on the highway, cows loose on the highway, um, mostly for officer safety or, or sorry, uh, community safety, so that uh, we don't have a motor vehicle collision um, there. Um, but we do get calls uh, usually in the springtime with, um, you know, raccoons acting strangely that they feel like they might be diseased or something like that, and officers sometimes have to put them down. Um, so those are the type of calls that we go on generally, but I mean, I could look into that for you if you wanted to know more specifically. What, what I'm interested in is whether or not any of these calls are for dogs, because we do have a canine control officer. And if right. it's a matter of a stray dog, she could capture it. And then if it's tagged or uh, implanted, they can contact the owner. And it would be... Uh, Take less, it'd be less of a strain on your staff looking after stray dogs. Sure. Usually, um, the calls, uh, people don't know that there's uh, animal control in the area. They would call us um, and we would tell our dispatch that, you know, yes, we know that this township does have uh, animal control and here's the number and their dispatch would look after that for us. Um, it's hard to say because sometimes the the call would warn an officer driving by and assisting the uh, animal control if they had to but uh, generally speaking the officers don't want to go on those calls and certainly would like to pass them on to animal control if i may deborah we don't have animal control dog control only right so if, if it's a, a dog we're interested in making sure that that dog is safe but okay. if it's cat, cats or other animals, we have, we'll leave that up to you guys. Sure, I will look that up for you and let you know if there were any dog related uh, animal calls in there. Okay. Jim, I've got a, a question. Go ahead. Um, about the uh, break ins in Dundalk uh, and uh, the area over here. I uh, just wondered uh, if you could fill us in a bit about what's going on. Um, if there has been, uh, how many, like I know there's been on your report says four in in January, but just kind of where you guys are with that. Uh, there has been an arrest made and that person's been charged and uh, they are not local, uh, but but uh, based on uh, video surveillance and witnesses and follow-up by the officers, there has been a, a person arrested and I believe all of the property has been returned. Great, that's good news. Okay, thanks. Uh, Mr. Chair, may I ask um, uh, the 
the board's opinion on getting more information like this? Is it uh, something that they'd like to to continue seeing? Um, well, I, was or... gonna, I was just gonna comment that uh, this is uh, one of the better reports that I've seen. There's a lot of information right. that we haven't had before, and I'm very pleased with the way that it's put forward. It's very helpful. And thank you very much. Like I said, the formatting will be different and we'll improve upon that. One of the things, for instance, that I think is important to report on is 911 calls for service. Uh, the reason why I think that's important is because it's usually the number one or second top call for service for any detachment and it is billable and the majority of them are 911 hangups uh, um, or cell phone misdials, pocket dials. And it, it um, is something that is a reactive call. Um, so it, it, is, it is a billable a call for service. And so I think that's important. And I think it's important to see if the trend is going up or down or you know, something like that. So that's one of the other things I'll be including. So there's a few more items that I'd like to include and uh, to have a more easy read format for you. And we're working on that, but I'm glad that you find this information helpful. Yes, it's very good. Very good. If I may, there is uh, one other matter that I think should come under your report. The uh, Zone 5 Inspector General's report is quite interesting. And as you had mentioned, the, uh, the idea of going to a single board, that came up a number of years ago and I voted for the single board for, for Gray County. It's uh, going to be a larger board for Grey Bruce. The interesting thing about it is that the uh, the members on the board will be a minimum of five, and there is no number specified as far as the total board goes. I would assume that the mayor of each of the municipalities would be on that board, and at least one member of council. The uh, provincial appointees will probably stay the same, but it's still a work in progress. But it's it is interesting to note that it has come back up again. See how well, far I, it goes. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, sorry. So um, it is driven by the ministry, and we have not got the regulations yet on that. So we're waiting to see what that'll look like and how but there will be an information package my understanding is sent out from the ministry to municipalities with sort of a step-by-step -step on how to you know create that new board and you know what that one or more boards means we don't really know what that means yet so we'll have to see you know how that all plays out but um yeah, to have, um, I think it's, you know, obviously very important to Southgate to get their information from their detachment commander. But like I said, I think it's also important to have an overall view of the county um, and the work that is done here. Um, because, you know, like I've, I've said a couple of times that the their crime knows no borders. And I think um, if I was a board member, that's something I would like to see. But um, yeah, I, I it's going to be interesting times in the next little while. Sure is. Is that the end of your report, Deborah? It is, sir. Very good. It's a damn good report. Thank okay, you. we have a move and a second for the detachment commander's report. Is there any comment? We already got a discussion? mover and second, Jim. We just need to just need to pass it. Alan moved it and Don seconded it. Yeah, I appreciate that. But uh, is, has there any other comment or discussion on this report? And hearing none, that is passed by unanimous consent. Uh, correspondence. 
No correspondence. New and unfinished business. I have something here that may be of interest. The, uh, the West Region Commander John Kane is uh, on his way out and uh, a new commander has been brought in, Dwight Thiss, commander of 39 years in service. So let's hope this detachment commander doesn't use all the inspectors as chess pieces and shift them all over the countryside. It's high time we had some permanent positions within the community. Uh, one other thing, uh, Interior Association Police Service Board Spring Conference is May 26 to 28, and the uh, registration is now open. So if there are any members who wish to be uh, involved in that, please let Lindsay know so that she can get the arrangements made. Uh, the next item here is up to you again, Deborah. Status of the joint ticket book. Do you have anything on that? Um, the last information that I had was the um, admin person from uh, Georgian Bluffs was taking the lead on that. Yeah. And she was doing some research into that. Um, so she was collecting some stats. Uh, she collected it from uh, by law enforcement as well as uh, our courts on the number of tickets, bylaw tickets that were laid, and um, the fact that we are will be going to e-ticketing very soon. So she's compiling a report. I've not heard back on that yet, but uh, that's something that she was uh, taking the lead on and, and looking into on behalf of the municipalities. Uh, Lindsay? Yeah, Brittany, she's the clerk at Georgian Bluff, so she reached out to, to all of us from all the secretaries of the police service boards to get those stats. So I think she was just waiting on a few more to respond to her. I responded with Southgate stats I got from our chief building officials. So uh, that's what she is doing. Like Deborah said, she's compiling a report to, I guess, bring to, to you, Deborah, I guess, would be the next step. And then to all the police service boards would be the would be her uh what she's doing i i'm assuming well that's good it's moved along it's taken a long time members privilege does anyone have anything they would like to bring forward boy the silence is deafening Uh, Jim, Jim, Don here. Yes, Don. I uh, just wanted a, a bit more update on the, the raid in Holstein. Uh, I don't see anything in the report, and there were seven OPP cruisers there. I assume that there was a lot of staff involved. Um, the been, place has been cleaned up. They just moved up the road about a mile uh, and reset up. I just wondered, I assume that's an ongoing thing, or you can't talk about it? You're unmute yourself. I can check with my units and uh, see what information I can share, and I could certainly bring that forward at the next meeting. Okay. So that would be a point of interest for the people in the Holstein. Well, if that's all for good news and celebrations, uh, we need confirmation of the next meeting of Tuesday, May 18. At nine o'clock. Has everyone got that noted? Okay, good people. Item number 12, adjournment. Who would like to move that? Alan oh, Green will move that. Everybody's on board for that. That's good. Thank you very much, everyone. And I'd like your report, uh, Deborah. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Right. Okay, we're now adjourned. Thank you.